Hey everybody, welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid. That is the name of our channel. And welcome to another morning ramble. We have 12 more bulbs that I've just put on our wildlife refuge Christmas tree here. Somebody, names I guess is a big thing. Uh, somebody recommended I call these things inspiration ornaments. I think that's a wonderful idea. So we put 12 new inspiration ornaments on our tree, which is almost full. Um, Again, if you've been watching, you know what's going on here with us and with our channel. If praying your thing is your thing, consider them prayer or ornaments. If meditation is your thing, consider them meditation ornaments. If thoughts and prayers, um, well wishes are your thing, that, you know, we don't alienate, we include all, so we call them inspirational ornaments or ornaments of inspiration. We had 12 requests come through overnight um, as well as well as one request, not a request, really a demand that we change our channel name because of what we've got going on here. I guess we're not making cheese out of goat milk. We're sharing stories of people who inspire us because they've been through very difficult situations and we're honoring them and their loved ones by putting ornaments on our trees up here. So anyway, let's get to the point. Um, my response is that I named the ornaments and I'm gonna give you an office tour. And then I'm gonna tell you who these 12 folks are or whose memory these inspirational ornaments have been put up in. First, here's my office. Okay, you've seen it before, you've seen it before but there's a slight change. Here's the office. Dun, 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 see that? I brought my laptop up. Here's why, I'll tell you as I walk over there. We need to get to this, we got a lot of stories to tell. Yesterday, after writing the fourth or fifth page, handwritten notes of who these bobs were for and what their stories were, it occurred to me, my gosh, these are coming in so fast, maybe I should copy and paste these comments and then paraphrase up here from the laptop. So, well, I'm actually right-handed. So that <clears throat> has alleviated the hand cramps. So this is my office, sitting here at my desk. And yes, there's a Band-Aid on my webcam because I try to keep Google from knowing too much about me. And I've talked about that in other rambles about how, well, whatever, I don't wanna to sound too crazy. We're up here to, uh, even though it's true and you guys know it. So anyway, um, this is my office. You know, I was a stockbroker for eight years after college and I remember people would come into my office and so oftentimes they'd say, wow, I love your office. And they'd look around admiring it and I would look around and all I saw was walls. And I thought, yeah, this is, I would say thank you, but you know, this is the kind of office I like. Look at this, you know? And I remember one time, one of these veteran brokers came in and gave me all these tips on decorating my office. They were talking about symbols of success. Put up any award you've ever won so when people come in, you look successful and they wanna do business with you. I did that. Looking back on it 20 years later almost now, I would say that was probably symbols of narcissism. You wanna see a symbol of success? Look at this symbol of the successful way in which a grand creator has created something more beautiful than man ever could. That, my friends, is a symbol of success. Now, that's the office tour. Let's get to these inspiration ornament dedications. Um, number one, Heidi Dietrich. Heidi's been with us for a long time. Uh, she asked if we could put up a bulb for her mother who died on December 23, 2007. She was a single mom of nine children after Heidi's father walked out. And uh, Heidi went on to, to, to mention how she just couldn't stop crying after her mother died. And uh, she never knew tears could flow like that. And ever since then, Christmas has always reminded her of the loss of her mother because she lost her mother two days before Christmas. So Heidi, you got an ornament, an inspirational ornament up there on the wildlife refuge tree. Jenny Bullock. Now guys, listen, this is very long. I'm gonna paraphrase. I read over these a couple of times, so I, I, I hope I don't make any mistakes. Um, some of you guys have been writing like uh, short stories as you're telling me your story and I first thought to tell you to keep it short and then I thought how callous is that? How can you keep something so painful, so traumatic or something that's so dear to your heart short? Make them as long as you want. I'm gonna do my best to paraphrase. Don't, uh, please don't be offended because I shortened it up just a bit. Uh, but you write what you feel because you know what? I'm a writer and I've found that through writing it releases a lot of this, these negative emotions and I, I bet you're feeling it as you guys write this and as you girls write this. I bet you're feeling it. So right away, and I'll paraphrase, um, and I am right-handed, so I'm, this is really multitasking here using this cursor with my left hand. But Jenny Bullock talked about how she, uh, uh, 
she she had a mild heart attack back in 2012. She found out after going to get medical care because of that, that she had a heart condition that was also shared by her sister and her father. And her father would go on to die from this. Um, and then her, her daughter uh, uh, got sick and she had to actually have her colon removed, which saved her life. Um, so that's the good news of that. And then in May of last year, Jenny's uh, heart stopped. She collapsed. She's had a lot of medical issues, a lot of health issues, a lot of tough times. So Jenny Bullock, you, the memory of your father, your daughter, your sister, who's, who, who has the same condition, you got a, an inspirational ornament up today. So now on to Mr. Alan Spring. Uh, Alan Spring said a lot of nice things about me and our channel. Thank you, Alan. Uh, but we're going to talk about Alan, not me. Uh, he asked if you, quote, if you find it in your heart to put a bulb on the tree for my two sons, Al and Andrew, and my brother Brian, my sister Debbie, and also including my mother and father that have passed on, we did. I found the kindness in my heart, a little, little bit of it that was left. I took it out, Alan, put a bulb on the tree for all you people. Um, he says when he wakes up in the mornings, he looks forward to these morning rambles. So, Alan, hopefully today my internet is working correctly and this will be a morning ramble instead of an afternoon ramble so i have the feeling we're going to be up here doing an afternoon ramble too with all these requests coming in but keep them coming um i'm going to get some more ornaments today because somebody requested a purple ornament for for somebody special to them and so i wasn't going to put up a silver or a gold i'm going to go buy a purple ornament so uh, and again guys don't even ask about sending us money we do not give you we don't have a p.o box we don't want anything we don't do GoFundMe, we don't do Patreon, we don't do the monthly subscriptions on YouTube. Everybody who's getting a bulb up is getting it up just because, okay? Um, this is why people are coming down on us. These trolls, we know who they are. And, and, and come on, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. Do the math. Uh, we do this because this is what we do. We don't monetarily profit at your expense by saying, hey, send us 20 bucks and we'll put a bulb up. That's not how it's being done. So, uh, and no, we're not changing our name. The only names we're going to deal with are the names for whom we're putting bulbs up. So, this is a long one, so please forgive me. I've got to paraphrase this one quite a bit. Robin Simple Life. Um, okay, there's a lot of medical terminology in here. Uh, Robin has had a rough life. She's 48 now. She's been six since she was 21. She lost her dad when he was 36 and she was only nine. Uh, and she said that started the downward spiral of her life. Ooh, she went, oh, there's some, Robin's been through a lot. You know what? There's some stuff that if I were to share explicitly on here, YouTube might shut our channel down because of violations of community standards. So, um, Robin, I'm not trying to discredit your hardships and what you've been through. Guys, Robin Simple Life needs our thoughts, our prayers, our, our well wishes, um, Whatever it is, whatever your thing is, keep Robin's simple life in, in your in mind as you do your thing. And Robin, you got an ornament on the tree. So uh, her husband had nine back surgeries. He's in pain every day. Has to take pain meds to function. Ugh. And then he had a heart attack in 2016. It just goes on and on. Robin, we're with you. Jennifer Gilbert. Jennifer Gilbert asked if we'd put a, an inspiration ornament up on the tree for a 22-year-old who passed uh, away this year in a car accident very close to her home. Uh, he was laid to rest yesterday, I guess. Brett Benson looks like the name. Strong young man that had a whole life ahead of him. Uh, he survived cancer, actually, at his young age, only to be taken out of this world by a car accident. Uh, Jennifer, we've put a bulb up for uh, Brett Benson today. So, Holly Hogan said, Dear Crazy Lake. <laughs> What's up, Holly? Uh, Holly's is a story of forgiveness. Uh, Holly could be a writer if she's not. Um, I, here's a, Holly talked about how her father, years ago, passed away uh, before her, just two days before her birthday. Um, and against her wishes... Her mother had her father buried on her birthday. Holly did not celebrate her birthday for 10 years because of this, and she held a very strong resentment toward her mother for doing that. Holly felt as if she, her mother kind of ruined her birthday because now 
every year she had to celebrate her birthday, she had to remember that that was, that was the day that her father was buried because he died two days before that. And so uh, one night, more than 10 years after this happened, Holly wrote in her, her message here that her father visited her in a dream and her father asked her to forgive her mother and her father pointed out to Holly that her mother had him buried on her birthday because that was her mother's way of kind of saying, hey, this is a way you can always spend this special day that you'll, you know, is marked every year with your father because this is the day we laid him to rest. Holly had never thought of that. And it was through this dream that she came to this revelation. Holly found it in her heart to forgive her mother. She celebrates her birthday now, and Holly pointed out that her and her mother are very close. Holly, that's an amazing story. Thank you for that story. You and your mother and the memory of your father got an inspirational ornament up here on our Wildlife Refuge Christmas tree today. Angel Heart. Angel Heart, I was more than happy to uh, put an ornament up here on our Wildlife Refuge tree in honor of you all the way over there in Bonnie, Scotland. Um, Angel Heart has been one of our subscribers for quite some time. I know this because she comments regularly. Angel Heart has always struck me as someone who's positive, happy-go-lucky, doesn't have a care in the world. Well, I found out today that Angel Heart suffers from fibromyalgia. Um, she's 48 now, and she's had this since she was 31, and almost every single day of her life, she lives in pain. Uh she she's tried she she went through the same thing i do and again we don't give medical advice or medication advice on here because i'm not qualified but i you know after my time in iraq and injuries i got on the meds and they did more harm for me than they did good put my life in a downward spiral uh, uh, uh angel heart is dealing with this right now too uh, dealing with the large amount of pain medications that it's required she says she tries to bring herself down off of uh, these addictive tablets and she fails because the pain can become unbearable. She's in this vicious cycle that she cannot break and hopes that one day she will find a cure. One day at a time is her ethos. She said she loves watching all our videos. Best wishes from Bonnie Scotland. Bonnie, it's a tough battle. Fortunately, my injuries healed and I so I'm not, I couldn't imagine having to have that pain every day. I know there were times if I didn't take my meds, I couldn't get out of bed. And I know the nightmare that led to addiction. So Bonnie's fighting a, 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 a two-pronged war here, guys. Uh, or, or, or Angel, Angel Heart in Bonnie, Scotland. Angel Heart, you got an inspirational bulb today. Um, Jewel Cook. Jewel Cook is one of our longtime subscribers. Jewel had a heck of a story. Uh, Jewel, you got an inspiration, Bob, for you, uh, your your sister who has passed, and your mother who has passed. Jewel shared a heartbreaking story with us about how her sister was murdered by somebody who was out of prison on the work release program. Uh, this was years ago, and it tore her up, tore her mother up. Her mother has since passed. Fortunately, if there's any silver lining to it, the killer was caught, and he was returned to prison before her mother passed. So her mother did get to have that bit of closure with that tragedy. Heart-wrenching story in Jewel. When the deer and the squirrels and the blue jays and whatever else lives up here, we know we've got a 300-pound black bear up here, among other things. When they see this beautiful tree over here, they're going to see an ornament on there for you. And then we've got Tracy Baker, or Tracy Becker. Uh, Tracy's got it rough, guys. Tracy shared a lot of things. She's got a lot of uh, financial problems. Uh, living arrangements are tough. She's got uh, children, adult children, who have issues. There's some drug addiction involved. Drug addiction involved with Tracy's story. She mentioned having, you know, someone in her life who comes to her for help, but it seems as if the only help this person wants is money. And Tracy, like myself, she might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. She has strong reason to believe that this money is probably wanted in order to get the next fix. So she she's not in a position to give money, and she wouldn't if she could. That's what I'm getting out of what she wrote because she knows it would go to drugs, not really necessities. She's in a tough spot right now, so let's let's hold Tracy up on our thoughts, prayers, meditations, well wishes. Tracy, you've got a bulb on the tree. Mary Lou Brown. Now, this one was very inspiring. Mary Lou Brown is 80 years old. Uh, she found out, well, she's, yeah, she's, she's almost 80. Um, recently, she, she 
or here in the past, she was diagnosed with cancer. She, she, she thought to herself, oh, well, I'm almost 80. It's probably a death sentence. She viewed it as a death sentence. But then she caught herself and she said, you know, she sat down at the table and wrote out a list or kind of a, a, an idea of who did she want to be between now and whenever as she faced this uh, situation. She chose, she, she said she knew she could become bitter and have a bitter end or she could become better and be the person she wanted to be throughout this challenge until this challenge is over. That is admirable. That is so, uh, Mary Lou Brown, you touched my heart and you got an inspirational ornament on the tree here today. Okay, Brock Airy. Brock Airy, you've got an inspirational ornament up here. Uh, Brock lost his mom two and a half years ago. He's still crying. Brock was one of three children uh, from this, this lady and, her, and Brock's father. Um, Brock pointed out that his mother had just celebrated her 98th birthday shortly before her passing. That's amazing. You don't hear about a lot of people living to be 98. So Brock... <clears throat> you and your mother's memory have an inspirational ornament up here on our wildlife refuge tree. Thoughts, prayers, well wishes, meditative practices going out with you from thousands of people that watch these videos. And uh, hang in there, Brock. You hang in there this Christmas, buddy. Um, Ed H. Ed H. mentioned about how they had a friend who, uh, well, a co-worker. Ed works at the post office, so this really hit close to home with me. Um, they had a friend from the post office who'd planned a trip to celebrate 42 years working at the post office uh, and his upcoming retirement. Um, his wife had already retired from the post office. His wife died from pneumonia unexpectedly. So during the week that they were supposed to be in Hawaii celebrating 42 years at the post office and being together all this time, they were at her funeral. That's Ed H., whoever your friends are, he didn't name them here, your friend, uh, the memory of his wife, and you have a, an inspirational ornament on our wildlife refuge tree. Um, Jeremy Harrison, just as I was leaving to come up here this morning, um, Jeremy gets, gets, gets a bulb, and Jeremy is sharing his bulb. Sorry, Jerry, to make you have to share your inspirational ornament, but Jerry is sharing it with thousands and thousands and thousands of you who watch these videos who I know have a need. Uh, I guess uh, in the church world, they call it unspoken prayer requests. Uh, Jeremy says, he, he, I read what he wrote. He says, you sure got my attention this morning. No wonder your sweet Daniel is so smart. I'm not going into all this right now, but I lost my brother 21 years ago this past September. He was just 23 years old. I know he wouldn't want me and our mother to still be in tears, but we are. The bowling ball reference definitely fits here. Thank you and God bless. I got to stop. So there was something about me talking about bowling with my family on my birthday and all this stuff that really struck a chord with Jeremy. Um, Jeremy didn't go into explicit details. He mentioned his brother. So Jeremy, you, your mother who are still in tears and your brother have an ornament. But folks, I also want Jeremy's, again, Jeremy, I hope you don't mind sharing your ornament, but I also want that ornament to represent all the things you folks don't tell. I know you're watching. I know many of you, if you've been around the block a couple times, if you've lived just more than a few years, you've been through something. And oftentimes during the Christmas season, the holiday season, whatever it is you celebrate, these things come up because we think about family, we think about the past. Whatever it is, you've got an unspoken prayer, thought, well wish, meditative practice on our wildlife refuge tree. So guys, this has been a long one. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And I'm going to give you a parting shot from my office. Again, check it out. Isn't that nice? It's got a chair and an old pine stump and a laptop. I used to be caged in with four walls and a ceiling and worked with millions and millions of dollars worth of people's money. And this is so much better. Thanks for being with me here for another video, another morning ramble from homesteading off the grid. We're not changing our name. You guys have a great day and we'll see you next time for more.